there is a gap. Not an enormous gap, there's a gap. He's deluding himself. There's a chasm between them. Those stats are not suggesting they are absolutely turning up and mullering Rangers at Parkhead. Luckily, that game wasn't close at all. Celtic were far, far better. How many players would, would make that gap less? How many would make that change the other way in Rangers' favour? It's not a lot. The side is this poor Rangers side that I would have known in, in my time in, in football. Martin, let's turn our attention to the, the topic of conversation Simon and I were embroiled in on Monday morning with one Graham Soonis. When you look at it, Celtic uh, take on Rangers at the weekend and they win by three goals to nil. Five successive home league wins at Celtic Park now in this fixture. One defeat in 19 old firms for Brendan Rodgers. <coughs> um, on Monday, Soonis' take was this. Yeah, there's a gap, but it's not that big. This was Graham Soonis. No doubt about it, there is a gap. That gap for me, looking at it, is Celtic have better strikers. Those stats are not suggesting that they are absolutely turning up and mullering Rangers at Parkhead. We finished last year second behind Celtic. At the end of the season, they spent 28 million, we spent 14 million, although they brought a lot of money in. So we are chasing them, but we're spending half the amount of money in, in the summer months. So there is a gap. Rain, Rangers are not in a healthy financial situation right now. Celtic are in a far better financial situation. What allows them to go out and cherry-pick players where Rangers are buying under pressure that everyone to buy has to come in and do a job right now. And that's that a difficult situation to be in. Graham's main, main, main point, I think, Martin, was this is cyclical. It all changes eventually. It'll change again. At the moment, the pendulum has, won, has swung towards Celtic. But it, that'll change again. Do you think it's as simple as that? Well, it, it may well do in another 15 years time or something like that. But at the spin it, uh, uh, Graham, I, I had this conversation with Graham just exactly a week ago. We were doing something up in, up in Glasgow and um, Graham, a fantastic footballer, just put that to the side, but he's deluding himself. Absolutely. Because there is a gap. There's a chasm between them. Yes, in the game itself, over a 90-minute period, they might actually be close. And if you're only beaten one or two nil or something, I guess you, then you can you can you can make all sorts of uh, uh, thoughts about it. And in terms of, of of well, listen, that that game was actually close. Well, actually, that game wasn't close at all. Celtic were far far better. And the idea that that uh, Rangers only spent le less money is because of Rangers, the demise of Rangers for the last number of years. If sorry, if there is such a thing as a demise, and then it continues, mm. um, but. Um, it's been it's been it's been terrible. It's really been terrible, and it doesn't do Celtic any favours, I don't think, because uh, for for Celtic to be really strong and trying to compete in European football, which is now that they're into the Champions League and have a definite chance, um, but um, for them to be strong, then Rangers have got to be strong, and Rangers are not. They're very very poor, and the side is. I would think it's as it's as poor a Rangers side that I would have known in, in my time in in football. In your time in yeah, football, yeah, it's really, this really is the poor. poorest Rangers side. They're de honestly, they are really, really poor. They wouldn't, they could not compete with a side that that I I was forced against uh, with under Dick Advocate and also under um, um, I tell you, uh, well, Dick Advocate was mm. there for the couple of years, yeah, and um, so um, uh, they were very strong at the side, they were very at the time, very, very strong, and. Um, the side would just wouldn't compete, and I know that sounds as if well, it means that if you did if you did okay against that, that Rangers side, then you're trying to boast yourself up. But I'm not trying to do that at all. It's just a very poor side, and because there is no money, they don't have any money. Uh, Graham mentioned there that they they had 14 million to spend. Celtic did double, but Celtic were getting money from getting into the Champions League last season. I think it was 30 odd million pounds for a start. Yeah, yeah. And secondly, but the recruitment has been poor, and you would think that some of the players are just not good enough to play for Rangers. It sounds gloomy for Rangers when when Martin describes it like that. And you're close to it, Martin. Of Sorry, course, you, I, I wanted you, to say it was you, Alex McLeese that, that was after after, after uh, Africa, who Alex did brilliantly for them. Yeah. Did you say this This is a chasm and the gap mm. could go on for as long as maybe well, a decade and a half? Well, it could go on for half. as long as Rangers get themselves together. That's the point. Financially, they're in very, very poor shape, uh, apparently. I mean, I'm not into their finances, but I think that's very poor. The recruitment doesn't look uh, too strong at all. And the players that they want to just compete at, and forget about European football, just compete at domestic level. You would, the, what, what, the difference, when I talk about a chasm, 
what I'm talking about is Celtic, Celtic have the ability to go away from home and win difficult matches that might might cause a problem, might cause a problem at mm. Tawdry, might cr- cause a problem at Easter Road yeah. or places like this here, Tyne Castle. You wouldn't guarantee... Rangers, you could not guarantee them going away from home and getting a result. And last year, and I know I'm, I'm not just putting in one uh, down to one fixture, but last year they had this chance of winning, of overturning this gap and making it... And they were in a good position as well too. Even after the Celtic game, which they drew, uh, they go to Ross County, they take the lead against Ross County and get beaten. You know, a, a, a Rangers side should not be doing no, that. No, no. Simon, I know you watch this from distance, but you're across it. Whose argument is more on point here, do you think? You sat where, you, you, as soon as sat where well, Martin is on Monday and you heard him, you're hearing Martin today. Well, I mean, I raised the point with Graham, didn't I, that Martin had already had this uh, opinion I mean, the margins between Rangers and Celtic um, last season were if they had dealt with Ross County as they should have done and Dundee the next game, mm. then Rangers might have won the league. And then there would be a different discussion yeah. because during the course of last season, Celtic weren't at the beginning of the season during certain periods of it um, uh, all that much either. Um, That's right. And so you now look at it, and, and Mark, we've had this discussion before. Graham is not objective, he's subjective about what he's looking at. Um, and Rangers' economic position isn't as strong as Celtic's. Celtic have made 20-odd million quid last season. Rangers made three or 400 grand. But it's not a desperate position. They just, they've just they not bought the right players at the right time. The manager, to me, looks like a capable operator. He looks like he's the right manager for Rangers if they can give him the right tools and the right resource. He looks like he's got the character and the wherewithal to be a, a moderately successful Rangers manager. The Michael Bill decision, I thought, was a very poor decision. Um, Sooness alluded to the fact that he was given money and spent unwisely. Um, which means that when you've got a real capable operator come in, he unfortunately gets the runt end of the situation because the money was spent with someone that wasn't capable of spending it properly. I, I think I'm probably more ensconced in Martin's camp because Graham makes the argument that we didn't get beat 6-0, so there's not a vast gap between the teams. Yeah. And I, my argument would be, well, you get beat every time you play them, mm. and it's a two-horse league. Yeah. And in that league, you're being beaten by the opposition, the only real opposition in the league, and you're getting beaten every single time. So that must mean... Mm. There is a vast gap. Just because you're not getting beaten six doesn't Absolutely. mean you weren't well beaten. This yeah. is the whole point. In time, and I, I know I was exaggerating by talking about 15 years, but in time, Rangers, you would imagine, will get themselves sorted out at some stage or another. Some some money, somebody will invest some money in Rangers again because it's such a big, big club, and eventually they will go back and compete with Celtic. How long that takes, I just don't know. I mean, Martin is saying, yeah, there are always people looking at Rangers from an investment point of view, Simon. Is it, an, is it a decent investment? As a project, um, well, the tragedy. Oh, let's is, be honest here. Well, the tragedy is Rangers Football Club and Celtic Football Clubs are unique beasts, but they don't play in a unique environment and a valuable environment. They play in Scottish football, mm. and the broadcast deals and the revenue generation around this uh, this, this football is nowhere near uh, worth investing in, particularly. Mm. But then there is the unique mm. phenomenon that Rangers and Celtic are. If Rangers and Celtic and we've had this, we've danced this dance, were to come down into English football, they would be at the top end Absolutely. of the pyramid. Maybe not initially, because they'd have to buy players yeah. to be able to acclimatise, but economically, it wouldn't take Rangers and Celtic long to be able to get into a situation where they were earning two, three, four hundred million a year in a similar way that some of the clubs inside the, champ- uh, the Premier League are now. But they are hamstrung by a valueless league. Their broadcasters attach no value to it. Yeah. You can pay one Premier League club the same amount of money for nine games that you play the entire Scottish League for an entire season for all 40 clubs. Is that right? That's the scale yeah. of yeah. difference. So it's not a good investment. Well, it, if you've it, got a bunch of money and you're looking at Rangers, you're thinking, well, no, I'll look elsewhere. Well, it depends what, you, depends what yeah. your investment criteria is. If you are a dyed-in-the-wall blue nose that wants to see his football club that's made a billion quid from something else and you just fancy a tilt at it, uh, and ultimately, you think you can perhaps wipe your mouth by some forward investment that you might get back if the team is a bit more successful, then maybe you take that punt. But not the way clubs are being bought now. Not the Todd Bowley buying, yeah. or the, 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 the Jim Radcliffe buying, or the Glazers buying, or the Wes Eads sure, buying. Sure. Because there's no, there's no opportunity we're, we're there. We're going to take a very quick break, Martin. But it, very briefly, does it sadden you? Because when these two are firing on all cylinders, there is no better fixture, is there? It, it, it genuinely does, actually, because you, you uh, again, getting back to the point, if I'm looking at it through Celtic eyes, 
you need Rangers to be strong. You need them to be very, very competitive and it keeps you strong. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I, I mean, there'll be a number of Celtic fans who, who will be uh, absolutely delighted at the situation at this minute. Mm. But not, not, not for me. I, I, I felt that I felt that at the time when, uh, I'm going back 20 odd years, obviously, but uh, coming into that environment where you had a really strong Rangers side, it galvanised you yourself to try and compete. Yeah. It's Jim White, Simon Jordan and Martin O'Neill. We're live in Talk Sport.